the idea that we have in this program is essentially in broad three parts. Uh, the three parts talk about these three things. You know, well, for, first part is, you know, goes into the overall landscape. What is Google doing? What is Facebook doing? What is Amazon doing? Microsoft? And all these big name providers that provide services in the cloud. We'll take a survey. We actually make use of these services that they provide. We talk about infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service, and try to make sense of these things, that these technologies that are available out there in the industry, and how does it apply to me as an individual, to me as maybe as a family, and extend the same idea to a small business all the way to large enterprises. How does it actually apply to what we do for business and what we do for work and to make meaning out of it? That's the idea in the first segment of the course, which is the cloud technology segment here. The second one is what is the, people call it uh, the meat and potatoes, nuts and bolts, basically the crux. And in this segment, we go deeper into what it takes to manage, deploy, operate, maintain, monitor, configure, and keep things running in the cloud on a large scale. Think of it as something that you want to run your entire data structure, data center, without physically touching the metal. Like there are racks and racks of servers, and, and it's servers laid out in various floors in multiple buildings across the nation, or even outside in multiple countries. That's how data centers are laid out in the cloud today. You don't want to actually go and touch these machines and the metal in those machines, but you still want to manage your data center. So you have a data center uh, that for your own business. So you're a medium-sized corporation with, say, 5,000 employees, and you need a variety of services for just your own purpose to ma manage and operate your business, your IT, as well as to service your customers that you have. But you don't want to be in the business of managing these machines. So you would rely on cloud computing to make use of these machines for your business and for your customers. How do you go about doing that? And that segment, the number two, uses modern, modern tools like we have this thing called Chef, which is an open source tool set that Facebook uses, that Google uses, that Amazon uses, Rackspace uses, HP Cloud uses. A large number of companies actually use these. Uh, these are open source tools that make use of languages like Ruby and some components in the open source from the Chef uh, set of suite of software. And I can demonstrate some of that to you that we use in the class to actually manage a reasonable size cloud in the, in the class as an as a assignment. So the classes that we have operate in a flip mode. And uh, the idea behind flip like, uh, is that you, what you do is you do your homework in the class and classwork in the home. So all lecturing that you know, the professor will do are videos that are pre-recorded video lectures and exercises that somebody, the students will actually do on their own before they even come to the class. And when they come here, what we are doing is there's no one way lecturing because you already know what was the lecture about. You already have read through. Now is the time to actually do it. So in the class, we do these exercises and physically run things like this. You know what this thing is, right? You're familiar with this, this thing called terminal? So we, we, I just connected to a cloud computer that I have that I am running something over there. And so I just hooked up through this machine connected to that machine in New York. And uh, I can operate on it sitting right here without actually going to New York. So we do these things in the class and do exercises hands-on with everybody in the classroom without a one-way lecture. So it's more interactive. So we walk around and actually make sure that everybody's doing these things and completing, succeeding with a project that they have in mind. Another thing, another critical thing we do is to make sure that the students, as they start through the program, even the, the series of these three things, at the very beginning, they go out and hunt for a particular opportunity to work on a project to finish at the end. As you progress along, what the idea is that you have a particular customer or client that you will work for either paid or pro bono, give away your work as a student and identify a very clear, succinct project that you work on along in the class and deliver that project in the third segment, design the entire architecture for that customer, design and implement a solution, and go and present to that owner, the business person, or the CEO, or the CTO, and create a business presentation, create a technical presentation, and make sure that they understand and actually receive something very valuable, something very tangible that you in the class create. 
as you work on this project. The ultimate outcome is to get a testimonial for each student in the class from that particular customer that you identified to begin with and work along in the project. And you put that on your LinkedIn profile because it's a customer testimonial for you that will help you get a job. That's the whole idea behind this project. So in three segments, we take the survey of the entire space in the industry. We go nuts and bolts in the detail in the, in the second segment. And in the third segment, we actually put these learnings together in form of a concrete project that you go and deliver to a customer.